Hello Year 9 and welcome to the History Department. My name is Mr Rogers and I'm here to discuss why you should be taking GCSE or why you might be thinking about taking GCSE as an option next year. So let's talk about history. Obviously it's a window into the past, it gives us that understanding of the past that allows us to think about the current place that we are in. It allows us to appreciate multiple perspectives and interpretation of history, how people see history, the analysing history strengthens critical thinking skills, an important skill for anyone's future. It gives us evidence that we can search for patterns and trends. We can then use that information to analyse and, and actually solve problems that are currently happening. It gives us an understanding of lots of peoples and cultures, which the, the image shows you. Um, it challenges us to think outside the box, to be creative. Uh, and of course, it gives us that excitement discovery. And like I said before, allows us to think about real world sol uh, problem solving. So what is really important to think about is that history is not just in the past. It is so much more than that. OK, image obviously makes a connection between Trumpism and Nazism. And whilst that may be a little bit controversial, that's the joy of history. History is controversial. OK, but at the same time, we can look at the past to help us inform the future. In year 10, we, we're doing people's health at the moment. We talk about the pandemic um, in the current pandemic, linking it to previous ones, whether it was the Black Death Middle Ages or whether it was the Spanish flu at the beginning of the 20th century. Year 13, we talk about civil rights. Okay, and we've been making lots of links between the Black Lives Matter and, and the reason that exists is because of slavery. It's because of the history of, of the black person in America. There are so many links and it's really important to make. And that's why, as I always say, history is the house in which all other subjects live in. Without history, you haven't got anything. But let's talk about history that you guys are going to be talk, uh, going to be studying at Oakhampton College. OK, this course has been put together so that it helps make connections between people's lives uh, in the past and the decisions that actually affect us today. So specifically, there's a British paper and there's a non-British paper. So this is the content for the British paper. We got people's health, which we study from the medieval period uh, through the early modern period, through the industrial period into the modern into today, essentially. Um, as I say, by the time you take your exam, there may well be some information about COVID in the textbook. Um, so we look at different pandemics, as we've already mentioned, Black Death. Um, we look at cholera, you know, we look at AIDS, we look at the Spanish flu. We look at how people lived at that time. You know, why did those diseases rife? It's something to do with how people lived and what they ate and, and their sanitation. Um, but we also look at what the government did. Um, and again, you know, we've been able to make recent comparisons about what, how the government reacted and how they reacted in the past to the same kind of thing. The other key topic we look at um, is the Norman Conquest, build on what you looked at in year seven, uh, but obviously a lot more depth. Uh, we actually look at the Anglo-Saxon period just before the Normans so that we can talk about how far did the Normans actually change our society, our society because they are really important because they, they are simply, simply the last people to have conquered this nation, okay, way back in 1066. So we look at them, look at to what degree did they change uh, and what impact that change had on our society. Now, we have to do historical sites, okay, and we've chosen a cathedral, A, eh, because it's important that you understand and you know your lo local history. Um, there are some really strong links between the Normans because essentially they started building that cathedral. Um, and so we look at it, but it looks very different from where the Normans left it to us, okay, and so that we will look at how it developed over time, um, looking at the impact of the English Civil War on it, uh, the, the Reformation before then, we'll look at the impact of the Second World War on it and look at the changes and why those changes happened. But also, you know, how do we know the history of Exeter Cathedral based on what's been left for us? OK, and believe me, you know, as amazing as it looks now, it looked even more amazing back when it was uh, back in the Middle Ages, when it looks similar to the way it does, but it's just a lot more colourful. Um, so we'll have a look at that. The non-British really focuses around uh, America. OK, so we join the, the story of America just after it, it becomes um, separate from the the British Empire um, when it becomes the United States but actually it takes a long time for it to become the United States of America as we know today so we look at how that happens and how it spread across and colonized the rest of America we will look at it in terms of uh, looking at it from the African-American point of view uh, from the slaves and then the, their first years of freedom after 1865 we will look at something very very new to a lot of you and that is the Native American story look at where they were when we pick up the story, 
and look at what happens to them as we go through to the 20th century. Uh, we also look at white Americans, especially the poor white Americans, and how they helped develop and, and make America in the way it is today. Um, we then, of course, and something which a lot of people really, really enjoy is looking at Nazism. Obviously, you know, at the moment, you're looking at Nazi Germany. We've been looking at Nazi Germany over the last few weeks. Uh, we all go into that, obviously, a lot more detail. Um, look at the impact of Hitler, how he changes um, its society. Uh, but also, we will look at how the war has affected Germany as well, to the point in 1945, Nazism is finally and thankfully defeated. So they are the five topics that you will study over the course of the two years. How are you assessed? Well, there are three papers. Okay? Each element is worth 20%, but of course, we've got British, we bring two elements together, and the World Paper, you bring two elements together as well. Each worth um, 80 marks, those the British and the World Paper, 40 for each one, so you split your time equally for those. And then you've got the historic environment, Exeter Cathedral, which is just an hour, couple of questions, extended variety ones, which you do, um, and again, they're worth 20%. Okay, and all papers are sat at the end of year 11. There is no coursework, as is the case with a lot of similar um, GCSEs. How do you know history GCSE is for you? Well, hopefully you've been enjoying your history. Okay, not only this year, but for the last two years, uh, or maybe it's just this year you've got into um, getting in a bit more, which is great. Um, it may be that you are just generally interested in history. Of course, if you're generally interested in history, you will find parts of the course which are going to interest you. OK, the other thing that might make you want to take history is that you are just generally interested in why things have happened in the past. OK, you like to understand people's opinions because you can make your own opinions on it. Um, something that is really, really important as well. And we've been trying to train you since year seven to do this is that is to produce good extended pieces of writing because you're going to have to do that in the exams. So, you know, if that's been going well and you've enjoyed it, then history is a subject you should do well in at GCSE level. And of course, and this is important for all GCSEs, if you're willing to work hard, again, this is a topic for you. So if you are a uh, someone who's interested in history, these are the characteristics that you should have, okay, or at least we can work on. First of all, you've got to be highly motivated. You've got to be willing to put the work in. Okay. You will be resourceful. Okay. How do you come to conclusions based on information you have? How do you go around that? Opinionated. It's so important that you make a stand. You are making arguments. You will be asked to make arguments. Okay, Which information is more interesting? And that links to decision making. So you can be critical about it. Are you interested in people around you? Okay, of Different cultures and different countries. Are you curious? Okay, Can you analyze things? Can you think about oh, why is that important? And are you able to solve problems? We do do that in our teaching at times. What do we do extracurricular? Well, extracurricular is a site study and all things being equal, we will take you up there, okay? Uh, to actually bring the site to life, by actually seeing some things that you'll study in the classroom. Uh, the guides up there are magnificent. We went up there a couple of years ago during the Christmas market and they were singing and it really added to the atmosphere. Okay, but that's a, it's a really good day trip out. Uh, beyond that, we have we did begin of last year. Miss Marchin developed and led uh, the trip to Washington, New York, uh, over ten days. It was truly amazing. We took forty students. Um, they did lots of really interesting things. Went to some amazing places and, and really enjoyed themselves. Um, so we will be looking to obviously try and get that up and running again. Obviously, at the moment, we can't promise anything, promise anything because things are so up in the air. OK, but if America doesn't get off his feet, even though Miss Marchant is keen to do it again, we may do a slightly smaller trip to Berlin as well. So there are some options, but it's something that you guys can be part of in helping us develop that aspect of the history department. What can I do with history? One simple answer. Anything. On the screen, you can see lots of different possibilities. OK, and I've probably forgot some on there as well. So you can become a politician if you don't like the way things are done by current politicians. Yeah, if you've got better ideas, then well, there's a job for you. Um, public relations, um, the Kardashians made their name um, with that uh, with that element as well. So you know, again, learning history, learning those critical thinking skills, problem solving, all that is our, our skills, which public relations help you do. You know, are you interested in the physical history? You know, being a curator, again, learning a history, you can develop this you know, at A level and degree level will help you become an effective creator. Um, you know, maybe 
the subject really does interest you and you want to write about it. Okay, you want to produce books, you want to be a name, someone who is an expert over something. Okay, or maybe you want to help run education departments. Um, you know, history will help you do that. Being a journalist, lawyer, media, film producer, history helps you understand the skills history teaches you and the understanding history gives you of how society works will help you become successful in those areas, you know, and become, you know, again, a household name. People like Dan Snow, a personal favorite of mine, okay, who's just a great historian. Um, and he makes amazing TV programs, which you and your parents may have seen. OK, and tourism, believe it or not, wherever you go in the world, OK, as a tourist, you will come across the history of that. And they would have spent the, the city, the country would have spent money on showing you their history because it's who they are. It is that importance. And that is why, as I always say, history is the house in which all of the subjects live in. It is that importance. Anyway, hopefully I've given you lots to think about. Um, and please feel free to contact myself, Miss Marchant or Mr. Giles, if you've got any questions about the course. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the presentation um, and obviously I look forward to working with many of you next year in year 10. Take care.